Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Brother Leroy Pierce on the Greater St. Paul AME Church where our pastor is Dr. Reverend Toby H. Fuller. And I greet you all this morning in the joy of just knowing Jesus. I greet you all this morning in the joy of just knowing Jesus, thanking him for another day's journey, thanking him for another week's journey. How we tread through seen and unseen danger and he has brought us back to this place once again. Oh, I thank him. I pray him. I give him glory on this morning. And this morning, we'll be looking at lesson number four, March the 27th, 2022. Lord, we thank you for this year, Father God. We praise and we glorify your holy name. Lest we forget, lest we forget, lest we forget. And when we look at this week's lesson, it is lesson scripture, Deuteronomy 8. Focus scripture, Deuteronomy 8. 1 through 11. And our key verse for this week, take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandment, his ordinance, and his statute, which I have commanded you today. God is letting us know. Remember what he did yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is wanting us to remember his status, remember the law. We are it back in the book of Torsa, where the book of laws, where we're looking at Deuteronomy, as we look at Moses continuing to lead God's people. We're looking at the commandment that Moses brought down and gave to God's people. Lest we forget, lest for fear that, for fear, we quick to forget. We quick to forget. We quick to let things overtake us. Fear less. We, we, you to denote ourselves and another on others. We, not just me, but we, quickly forget, forget to cease to fail or remember, un unable to recall, forget. We are quick to forget what people have done for us. We are quick to forget what God has done for us. How he has brought us out of that old muddy clay and put us on solid ground. We are quick to forget. So I'm coming this morning to remind you, do not forget what thus says the Lord. God has a purpose and a plan for our life. All we have to do is anchor ourselves and study his word and pray and ask him for direction that he may manifest himself in us, that we may be continue to walk in a way that is pleasing to him. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. Let us look to the hill as we jump into this lesson. Let us see, lest we forget, lest we forget. Mm, Lord, I thank you. Our Father and our God, we praise you, we glorify you, we just give you, we just magnify your holy name on this Sunday morning, thanking you for once again watching over us. As we lay slept in slumber last night, Father God, and this morning, you touch it with the finger of life, Father God. Oh, we thank you for that touch, Father God. We praise and we glorify your holy name. So many didn't get that touch this morning, Father God, on this side. But Lord, we are the blessed one, and we thank you, Father God, for loving us just that much, Father God, that you touch us. Lord God, as we come to learn about what does you says you, O oh Lord, as we remember the children from Israel, Father God, the commandment that you gave them, the, the promise that you made, Father God, we standing on those promises this morning, Father God, thanking you for your word, Father God, O oh, my hearts and mind to receive what does says you, O oh Lord, Father God, anoint us afresh this morning, Father God, that your word will fall deep within our soul. Father God, we will go out and tell somebody the goodness of Jesus. We thank you this morning, Father God, for what you have done and what you're getting ready to do in this season. Oh, have thy way in this lesson, Father God. Have thy way. Remove Leroy and Holy Spirit. Have thy way. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 11. This entire commandment I have commanded you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestor. And when we look at the word possess, possess to take over, to, to receive. And this is the promise that God made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
that he will give them the land in Canaan. This land, he said, you will go in and you will possess. You will take over. You will own it. This is the promise that God made. So when God makes a promise, he keeps those promises. All we have to do is pray and seek God's faith and ask him to continue to guide us into the land that he's promised us. If he made a promise to you, you will not die until that promise comes true. So we thank God for keep being a promise keeper. Remember the long ways that the Lord your God has led you those 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, test you, to know that in know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandment. Now remember now when they started off in Egypt, it was millions of people that started out with the journey. But so many of them fell, fell to the side. But you see why? God is testing us. He just wants to see if we're going to stay, stay committed to him and stay humble and continue to do his work. That's what God is looking for from us. He don't want somebody to, on Sunday morning. He want them all week long. And I thank God for the promise that he made. I thank God for continuing to keep his commandment, doing all I can, not to sin against his divine name. They always try to bring glory to his name. Yes, I'm, I'm a man, I fall short. That's why when I pray and I ask God to forgive me of all my shortcomings in word, deed, thoughts, and action. So we have to remember that. God is testing us. God is trying us to see if we're going to stay faithful. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with mammal, from which, never, which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And we remember this quote coming from Jesus as he was journeying through the wilderness. He was journeying through the wilderness. And the devil tried to tempt Jesus. The devil come at Jesus, telling him, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God. But what did Jesus say? God said, man shall not live by bread alone. God said, God, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Or and God said, thou shalt not bow down and serve no other God. So we thank God this morning for his commandment. We thank God for what he has installed in us. And I thank Brother Taylor for this lesson that he teaches our children, helping them to understand temptation in this world is running rapid. We look at these guys and women's hair dress, wearing the gold, fine cars, and all that. That ain't no more than the plot of the devil to try to draw in our kids, to take them away from our church. Boy, I'm praying this morning, I'm calling those of God's children, those are heirs of Abraham, they shall live and shall not die, declare the works of the Lord this morning. Oh, I thank God this morning for turning them around, even though the enemy come to kill, steal, and describe, but we have Jesus that came, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, we thank you for the life that you have gave us. Oh, yes, the clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these 40 days, 40 years, excuse me, 40 years that they journeyed through the desert. It's journeyed through that desert. The, sweet, the clothes didn't wear out, the same clothes, same sandals, feet didn't swell. Now we try to walk two miles, our feet swelling, legs hurting and everything else. Boy, we praise God for showing himself mighty and strong in the Israelite life. Let them know that he's God Almighty. And there's nothing too hard for him to do. All we have to do is continue to feast on his word. Continue to be obedient to him and do his will. And he will supply our need. He will take care of us. Or oh, knowing them in your heart, then knowing them in your heart as a parent, discipline a child. So the Lord disciplined you. God going to chastise us when we're not doing what thus says the Lord. He is going to chastise us. So don't feel bad when you go through some trials and tribulations. Just understand that you did not do what does say the Lord somewhere along the line. So he is punishing you, but he still loves you, and he's still going to take care of you. Just as he did the children of Israel. As he sent them into captivity, he continued to supply for them, take care of them. In the desert, he continued to give them manna. He continued to feed them. 
So the same God is here today. That was yesterday and in the future to come. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. Fear the Lord thy God. Fear him, knowing that he can do things to you. Mm, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise your name. Oh, Father, have that way in this lesson this morning. Fear him. Continue to know that God is all powerful. No matter where you go or what you do, he's right there. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land flowing, screams with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, knowing that this is the good land, knowing that what God had promised the children of Israel, he promised us the same thing today. He's going to lead us into a land of milk and honey. He's going to lead us into a land that's flowing with water on the stream. He's going to lead us to the rock. Woo, Lord, we thank you this morning. A land of wheat and barrel, of vines and fig trees and pomegranate. A land of olive trees and honey. This is the good land that God has given us. Oh, yes, Lord, we possess a land that we didn't have to do the labor for. A land where you may eat bread without sacrifice, where you will lack nothing. A land from stones or iron and from whom hill you may mine copper. This is the good land. This is the land that God promised the Israelites, promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the land that God promised us to be. Oh, we thank God for keeping his promise. We praise God for always going before us, making a way out of nowhere. Sometimes it don't look good, but oh, no, no, that is working for the good of the Lord. All we have to do is trust him. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the God, for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandment, his honor and his death, which I am commanding you. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not Bear false witness against thy neighbor. Love thy, thy shall respect and honor thy parent. Or oh, these are the laws that God gave us and we have to keep these laws. Even though Jesus came into this world to fulfill the laws, knowing that we was going to fall short, but we have to do our best to continue to do what does says the Lord. We have to do our best to continue to serve God. Yeah, we're going to fall short because we are sinners saved by the grace of God. So we have to keep Doing what does says the Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning. Our introduction this morning. In the previous lesson, we received the historical chronicle of the exiled Jews as they returned to Jerusalem. The decree by King Cyrus of Persia, further validated by King Darius, affirmed by the prophet of Haggai and Zechariah that the people would one day return to their homeland and worship the Lord thy God at the Holy Temple. Understanding that God makes promise. Anything that has been stolen from you, taken from you, God will restore. Children of Ukraine, it shall be restored. All you have to do is keep hope in the Lord, knowing that God is with you in the battle. Lord, we thank you this morning, Father God, for helping those people in Ukraine. The prophets encouraged and strengthened those re resolved to embrace their liberation. But it was not enough to return to their home and restore their commitment, community, and livelihood. The prophets continued to show concern that the people would regret and be lured to pagan practice which led to their previous demise. They start serving false God. This is when Moses went back to the mountain to receive the commandment. God said, go back, go back quick. Because what they're doing, they're making a false God. They have done made a gold calf and they were worshiping that gold calf. Oh, look at here, look at here. Lord, we thank you for being the one and true living God. No matter what he would make on this earth, do not model it. Do not walk, bow down to it. Do not worship it. Worship the true and living God, knowing where all your help come from, and it comes from the Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning for your help. We thank you for always making a way. This book, entire Deuteronomy, Ephesians, Forceful Ways, 
reinforce God's laws to instill obedience and righteous behavior among God's people. Doing what is right. Standing up for what is right. Obeying the laws. Lord, we thank you. Deuteronomy serve as a stern reminder to God's chosen people of their responsibility to obey God's law. As they transition from enslavement to freedom, they must also remember their obligation to be obedient to God's command. This is because God brought you out of situation. Continue to praise God. Continue to thank Him for what He has done in your life and He continue to do. Oh, we give God glory on this morning. Oh, we thank Him for continue to bring us out of captivity. He continue to free us from ourselves. Because a lot of time our worst enemy is us. So we thank God for freeing us from us. Oh, we thank God for breaking the shackles, breaking the chains this morning. Oh, yes, Lord, we thank you this morning. Oh, lest, lest we forget. Mm. Lord, we thank you, Father God. Ooh. Telling the Bible story this morning, the book of Deuteronomy is an appropriate teaching tool for the people as they exit their oppressive ex extent in Babylon. The scripture enabled them to compare their new post exile life with those who were also liberated by the hands of God, brought set free, set free by God. With a very direct command, the sacred writer clearly states that the people must obey the laws in their entirety. Verse 1. As often found in Hebrew texts, these are consequences for none are heathen to select portions of God's command. As seen in the current story, disobedience to the simple instruction can lead to dire consequence. Genesis 23, excuse me, Genesis 3 and 23. You have to obey God's laws, obey God's command, do what does says the Lord. The use of parent oversight and discipline illustrates God's love for his children while reminding them of their responsibility to remain obedient. This is God points you. He sent them back into captivity, but he let them know I still love you. This is because y'all are being disobedient and hard-headed. When I tell you what not to do, you continue to do it. So God is punishing them, letting them know you have to still buy by these laws. Even though I brought you into this fine land, you still have rules and regulations that you have to abide by. So we have to continue to do what thus says the Lord. Not our own thing, but what thus says the Lord. The etiquette reference to God, parent, and rule allows the listener to recognize the benefit as well. The Deuteronomy writer illustrates God's past provision in liberation the Israelite from Egypt's slave. Their post-liberation journey was filled with God's favor and grace. As the Lord provided manna from heaven and meat to eat, the clothes on their back never wore out, which is an illustration of God's divine providence, protecting, protecting them from his harsh environment in which they lived. Now, the Israelites were traveling through the desert, the desert. And you know how hot the desert and dry the desert and how these storm, wind storms comes up and how they will cut you so bad. But God protect them from all that. Same way he protect us today from seeing and unseen danger. So we thank God for being a God that loves us. We thank God for being a God that sits high and look low, see it all and knows all. And love us just that much. They all had to also present a bright future before them. Recalling their history reminds the people that they evolved from slave to a great and powerful nation. Their birth as a nation was established as they were led by faith in God's covered relationship with Abraham. As God promised Abraham, leave your father's home and go to a land that I am showing you, flowing with milk and honey. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Well, I thank you for the promise of Abraham, the prophecy word of Moses, and anointing military might of God, champions such as Joshua and David. Deuteronomy foretell the conquest, conquest of Israel over Jericho, leading the people to live an abundant and prosperous life. This could continue, this will continue for centuries as long as they remain, remain faithful to their God. 
This book was extend, extend to their com commitment to God's command while also reminding them of the blessing of being God's chosen people. So understand, we have to always keep in mind we are God's chosen people. We are the one that God has ordained to do his will and his word. So we have to continue to spend time with God every day in his word, feasting on not only bread, but on his word, preparing us for the day's journey, preparing us for what to come, preparing us for who we will meet the need to hear a word from us. Letting, us know, letting them know God is able to do just what he said he's going to do. No matter what you're going through, trust God. And he will see you through your situation. Heartaches and pain, trust God. Misery, trust God. And he will bring you through. Lord, we thank you this morning for always bringing us through the things that we don't understand, the things that are burning us down, the things that are trying to kill us. Lord, we thank you. Thank Coughlin. Thank Coughlin. And to the lion knows how to write. Every story will glorify the hunter, African proverb. Until the lion knows how to write. Every, every story will glorify the hunter. And when we look at that, this dad, understanding what that means. A lion can't write. A lion can't write. So all the glory is going to always go to that hunter who got the gun and go out there and shoot. But they're never going to tell how they had to really truly went out and chased that lion. How they really had to do. Or how much that lion defeated them. How much that lion outsmarted them. How much that lion killed their men. The lion can't write and tell his story. But the, the, the hunters can. This proverb challenged the listener to review each historian narrated through a different lens. As the story are passed down and documented to memorization, past event, the writer had the power to control the narrative and eject a favor of prosperity of the one who holds pens in their hand. Every story has two sides. It's my side and it's the other person's side. If I'm not able to stand and tell my side of the story, then whoever got the pen in their hand going to get all the glory. I'm reminded of what I'm going through now, dealing with my grandson. I can only go by what they're saying who was there. I wasn't there, but God was there. So I'm trusting in God that whatever they said happened was what happened. But if it wasn't, God would bring it to the forefront in his time, not ours, but his time. The greatest achievement, but I'm asking God to comfort my daughter. She continue to go through her bereavement, to keep her strong, to keep her level head, and trust God. The greatest achievement of past historic and shorn, shorn, being prior to nation and family. But there's always another side to the tale, another prosperity. Most oppressive group has been enabled to present the historic acquainted and cultural view of their ancestor without some bias and inadequate by the oppressor or demonished polo, polo, excuse me, polo, polo, popularity. There is possibility, no greater tragedy than the distorted native of the people of Africa and their descendants. The content that is the cater and birthplace of humanity also boasts of having the richest nation resource on the planet, and that's Africa. The greatest of these are the people who are arch warriors, astronomers, artists, and more. The home of the great lion has also been the place where all species have been hunted and preyed upon. The narrative of the African dispole has yet to be authenticated, presented from the lion's view. The hunter common called the carnists, the carnists, has held the pen for far too long. It is inadequate upon those who share the great heritage of the African disposal to correct this autonomous city and bring glorified to the hearts of one hunter. The story will illustrate the beauty, power, and grief 
giftedness of those who have been often been only a mind for sport. Furthermore, it is not simple the hunter or the jungle who pray, but business, force, force fantasy, music company, fashion industry, and more. There is also a hunter for a pride that will glorify the hunter. It is time for the hunter to reveal their true worth and show their glory through a liberated land. The story is waiting to be told. And like I said earlier, the hunter gets to tell the whole story. The lion tells nothing. But we thank God for knowing this story, knowing what happened. We thank God this morning. Case study during the protest of protest over George Floyd murder. Sometime, something was stern in the hearts and minds of young of a young high school student across the country. Hassan Amar, a 17-year-old student in Winsky, Vermont, considered how unfortunate informant he was as he sat in an English class taught by only by white teachers. Akin Uber lived in Belmont, Massachusetts and attended an all-boys school. At age 17 years old, he complained, contemplate why there was no history shared about the large bells on their campus used to common enslaved people on a Cuban ship plantation. Vanessa Armand, an 18-year-old from Vermont, Vin Vermont, reflect on her high school experience. She shared with the reporter that it simply felt that they were teaching someone else history, not American history. Amora and a small group of students came together to form an organization called What Youth Can Do. The group submitted demands to school administration to integrate black history into the culture. Most students were frustrated because all they heard about in black history surrounding slavery. Other groups of young people brought a significant issue of the lack of black authors in school. A social media campaign was launched, We Need Diverse Book, and soon went viral. Meanwhile, a mother of a ninth grader sent a formal complaint regarding a geographic textbook that described the millions of slaves brought from Africa to America between the 1500 and the 1800 as workers gathered them brutally oppressed it and enslaved people. The African American mother complained went viral into McGregor's history updating the language in the textbook. Understanding once again we see the writer writing what he want to write, giving us what he wants us to learn. That's why it's up to us to go out and show ourselves mighty and strong and study God's word, study our history and understanding where we came from, why we end up the way we end up, understanding that God is a God that sits high and looks low. And the question would be, why did God allow us to go through the things that we went through? He allowed us to go through the things we went through to bring glory to his name. Were you saying, well, how did that bring glory to his name? Because we continue to pray and ask God to deliver us from this slave, that mentality that we were in. To deliver us from these hands of these wicked people. This is God delivered Israel out of, delivered the Israelites out of Egypt. He delivered us out of the hand of the enemy. He brought us into a land flowing with milk and honey. He brought us into a land that he gave us. Understanding that we read back by the 40 acres and a mule. Understanding that where we came from, from the port of, from the right fields of the ocean, 30, 30 yards in, I'm thinking it was. Understanding that what God has given us, we have to glorify God. Go out. Even if they don't teach us in school. There are a lot of things I didn't learn in history that I learned on my own. Understanding and thanking God for the insight that he has given me. To go out and do research. To go out and understand. To go out and know that God is in the midst of all that's going on. Don't ever feel that God is in the midst of us. Because he is. 
He is continuing to take care of us. Oh, I thank God this morning for always making ways out of nowhere. Informing each generation of their historic past is a culture in importance, cultural belief, and social practice. It is the key to avoid past mistakes and writing a new narrative for the future. As one of those young people articulated the ability to change race relations in this country is directly corrupted to improving the education of American oppressive and racial pain. These young people were determined to do what they could to learn from the past, hopefully making a difference in their future. Are you making a difference in this world today? Are you standing up for Christ? Are you pointing and saying, you see, you saying we being oppressed, you saying we being, but continue to pray and ask God to deliver us from whatever you think we're going through. God is not blind nor deaf to the things that are going on in this world. Continue to pray, continue to call on the name of the Lord. We coming off a two year shutdown from COVID. Understanding God want us to reach beyond the walls of the church. He want us to go out into the highways and byways and tell people about the goodness of Jesus. The good news that we hide in our hearts knowing that God is able to take care of us. He's able to bring us through. Yeah, there were so many lives lost in that, pan in that pandemic, but through it all. God has saved us and he has kept us. Because if you're here looking at this video today, you need to give God some glory, praise, and honor. Thanking him for bringing you and keeping you through the midst of all the things that goes on in this land. Lord, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Father God, for letting me not forget what you have done for me. Letting you not forget how you have brought me out of the bondage. Lord, I thank you this morning. Life application. Most mistakes in life can be avoided by, mis by understanding the mistakes of the past. Do you learn from your past? A lot of us don't. A lot of times I don't. I'm continuing to pray and ask God to show me and direct me in a way that he would have me to go, what he would have me to do. So I thank God this morning. Head of the advice and behavior also needed to conform to their recommend to God. Look back at the commandments of God providing them the blueprint for success. If they were willing to commit to it, the consequences were certain, but the benefits would be tremendous. The same question can be posed to people who follow the follow Lord in the 21st century. God the Father expects his children to follow the basic commandment. He had provided his mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. His grace allows us to remain in his favor. Even if we fall short, but we must remember that God is all is not pleased with continuing to backslide into disobedience. Furthermore, God expects us to share this method to the next generation, being as honest about the past and avoid the pitfall of repeating it. Understanding. I've heard so many people, family members, Growing up, telling I'm not raising my child the way I've been raised. I'm not bringing my child, making them go to church. You're not making them go to church, but they're making them go to jail. When you're not installing Christ in your child, and it goes into the jailhouse, they're installing what they want to install in them. You got all different kinds of religion behind these bars. And they're coming to realize that when they get out there, that's not the way it is, and they're confused. Take your children back to church. Bring them to church. Teach them about Jesus. Let them know in the midst of your trials and tribulations, call on the name of the Lord. Say, Lord, come into my life and save me. Deliver me from the ways of this old world. Deliver me from my enemy. It's all right to call on the name of the Lord. I thank God for Hester and Robert teaching me to call on the name of the Lord in the midst of trials and tribulation, in the midst of sickness, pain, and hurt. I thank God for my parents and everyone that came along in my path to help me to realize it's all right to call on the name of the Lord. One time I was wondering how people going to look at me and feel when I started calling on the name of the Lord. It's all right they can look at me any kind of way they want to look at me. But I know where all my help come from. I give God glory, praise, and honor this morning for what he has installed in me. 
This gift that he has given me, man cannot just take it away. Even on my bad reflection, on my bad of death, I still will call on the name of the Lord. I still will thank him. I still will praise him because he is God Almighty. As we close this day with our closing prayer, oh, eternal life, keep us understand by this world through ever cleansing blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ, who takes away the sins of the world in Jesus' name. I thank y'all for allowing me to come into your home this morning with this message. Let's not forget. I pray, God, that this message was a blessing to you and help you to understand that what happened back in the time of Israel is still happening today. But the same God that was back then, he's here today, helping us, guiding us, and keeping us. As we continue to press on to do his will, continue to hold on to God unchanging hand. He's able to do just what he said he will do. I thank y'all. I love y'all. Have an awesome week. Be blessed and be encouraged. Amen.